Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and let's continue with this series on Django. In the last video we have started working with the registration form and then the moment you click on submit, the request will go somewhere. Oh, where but. So if you go back to registration.html, we are saying when you click on submit, request goes to register. But what is register here? So if you go to URLs, you can see whenever someone calls for register, it will call the method or the function which is register itself from the views. But we are using the same function for both the requests. For fetching the page which is register.html and for sending data as well. And now that's where the get and post make sense. So basically when you are calling this register.html, you are sending a get request. When you are submitting data, you are sending a post request. So even if your URL is same, what is changing is the type of request. So here, based on what type of request you send, you will call that particular page, right, or the feature. Now in this case, we want to work with, so I mean, this should be executed when you send a get request. What if it is a post request? In that case, you will say if. So how will you check if the request is get or post? So you can say if request.method, if that is equal to post, now how will you check that? So we'll say if that is equal to post, then you will do something. Otherwise you will say else, you will execute this part, right? It's that simple, we are missing a colon there. So if it is post, then what you will do? So if it is post, it's very simple. You can simply fetch all the values which is coming from the user. Okay, but how will you fetch all those data? So it's very simple. You will create some variables. So we'll say first, named as the first variable and you will say request dot. Now there, there are multiple ways of fetching data. One is if you just get, you will say request dot get. If it is post, it is request dot post. In fact, we have seen this when we were adding two numbers and that's why that example was important. So you will say request dot post and in this you will specify from where you're getting data. So you're getting the data from first name and this first name is same as the name of a field in the HTML file, right? So we also need last name so we can simply copy this. Again, we need six, I guess, or here, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and here we'll say last. Last name, this is, this has to be username. And this will be password, but password one, because we need two passwords, password one and password two. So we'll say password two, and this will be email. Okay, we have to change some stuff here as well. So this is last, this is user, this is password one, password two, email. So that's it, we got the data from the user. But how will you save this in database? Now, if you say you got the value, now you want to hit this data with to the database, we need to write SQL query, right? That's what we do in normal projects. We have to use SQL to interact with database. But that's not the case because we are using ORM. Once you got your data, you can simply push that data in database, provided you have a model with you. So if you remember, if you have a model object, you can set this data there and you can save this data in database directly. But do we have a model object for the user? So you don't have to worry about the user model object. It is there in the Django framework. We just have to use it. And the way you can use that, so first of all, you have to import it. So you will say from models. And you have to import two things. The first one you will import is user. And then we'll also be using for login, which is auth. So auth will be used for the login part. So let's take it as at this point itself. Once we got all the data, let's save this data. Now, first of all, we need to create a user object. So you will say user is equal to. Now, since we, got, we already imported user, so we can say user.objects. That's how you handle the database. Uh, so you will say user.objects. Now we have to create a new user. So we'll say create underscore user and in bracket you have to pass all the parameters the first one you will say username you have to pass username password okay now we have to pass only one password not two so let's pass password one and we have to pass the email id and we'll set the email id as email so all this data all these fields are available in the model object of django for the user so we'll say first name and we'll say first name so this, this user is of the model and then this username is what you are passing. Same goes for the, all the fields here. And last name would be last name. And our job is done. Once you got the object, oh, so okay. We have not saved it yet. We have got the object with all the data. Now, once you got the object, it's very simple. You just have to save the data. And the way you can do that is by saying user.save. Now, I know you don't trust me, okay? But let's see if this, if this works. In fact, I want to do one more thing. Once it is saved, I just want to print something on this on the console. 
so that we'll know something has happened. I will say print user created. That's what I want to say. And then we also want to call a page. Uh, maybe I want to call the home page again. Once the registration is done, I want to call the home page. So I will say return. So we have to redirect to the home page. So we'll say redirect slash. That's how you go back to the home page. Okay. But as you can see, redirect is not available. Let's go back to render. I mean, the first line, and we also import redirect. And our job is done. So we are redirecting to home page. I'm not sure will this work. Let's verify. Let's go back to our home page and we'll say register. I want to register the user. And this time, I want to register Manoj. Diwari, the username is Manoj, email id is man at the gmail.com and the password is let's say 1234, let's say the password is 1234, click on submit, we got the home page. Yeah, so you can see if I go back to my console, it says user created, but the actual verification will be done in the database. So let's go back to our PG admin and we'll say right click, view all data. Can you see that? We got a new user and this user is not a super user and that's why it says false. We got username, first name, last name and then email ID, what else we have? Is it a staff? No. Is active? Yes. And last login is not done, that's, that's fine because we have not done the login yet. Date joined the current time. Everything is set and the, your password is stored in the secure format. Done, right? We are able to register the user. But we are still missing some things here. So what exactly we are missing? We are missing three things. The first thing is we have not verified if the password one is matching with password two. That's the first verification we have missed. The second verification is what if the current username is already used? Example, when you create an account on Gmail or anywhere where the username should be unique, we are not checking that. Third, we are not even checking if the email is already exist or not in database because if it is exist, you can't use the same email ID. So that's what we want to verify before. In fact, this is not a good practice. We should verify first. But since we were excited, we have done the code. It's working, but we have to first check that. So how will you check? So even before doing this, we have to apply if condition. So you have to say if the password one is equal to equal to password two, then only you should proceed. Even all these things should be done only when it is true. Else what you will do is you will print, else you will print user not, or maybe password not matching. Okay, this is what we need. So if you go back to the registration form, uh, let's say register again. And this time, let me just, and this time let me enter any random data here, any random username, random email ID, or oh, it should be verified. And then the password is 1234 for the first, I mean, password is 1234, the password is 12. Click on submit and you can see we got the homepage again. But let's go back to the console and the console says password not matching. And this time we got, we have not got the new user. So it says, you can see nowhere it says user created. So we have not created the new user. But that was the first checking. The second checking we have to do is if the user is already exist in the database, even if it is same, password is same, we have to first check for the user. So let's do that here. So if user.objects, how will you check? So we'll say user.objects.filter. In this filter, so we'll say username.username.exist. Now, if this will give you true, it simply means the username is already taken, so you can't use that. Uh, so we'll simply print here username taken, right? And this part, the actual thing should be done only in the else part. So now again, we have to use tab. Okay, so basically we are checking two things, right? Username taken. In fact, we need to do one more checking here, which is for, uh, we'll say elif, and this checking is for the email ID. So we'll say user dot. So we'll check for email, the same thing we have done for the user. If this exists, we'll print email taken, and then the entire stuff will be available in the else part. Simple, right? Nothing complex. And now let's, let's try this once again. Let's go back to my browser. And if I say register, okay, let's go for a random value again. So we'll say Manoj, random value. And then I will be using a username, which is Naveen, which is already taken and password and password will be anything. Not pa email ID should be any anything, not password. Let's click on submit and it should. Okay, so we got registration again, but let's verify in the console. You can see it says username taken. You can also try it for the password. So make sure that you have a password and read that again, it will print invalid password. Okay, so that's how you handle the validations here. We have checked for username, we have checked for the email and if everything is matching, then it will uh, save as a new user. Okay, so what we are missing now, of course we have not done login and logout as of now, but maybe we, ought, we have to also work with the messages part. 
because the messages is coming in the console right we don't want to do that we if, if something goes wrong i want to print the message there itself in the relation form how will you do that that will see in the next video so in this video we have seen how to register the user in database uh, so that's it i hope you are enjoying that in the comment section and please subscribe for other videos bye